Hi again everyone. In this video I am going to be going over activity 10-5 titled Creating a WMI Filter. This is from the MCSE slash MCSA Guide to Microsoft Windows Server 2012 Administration in preparation of exam 70-411. In my edition of the book this activity begins on page 379. Um, so the quick background about this activity. Um, we have some group policies that are being applied within my domain. Um, specifically, we're going to be working with GPO1 here, and I just want to take a quick look at what exactly this group policy object does. So one thing that it will do is give me information about previous logons the whenever a user logs in, and it will also take a user directly to the desktop rather than taking them to the start screen on Windows 8 or Windows 10. Um, so first, I want to make sure that this is applying correctly. So I'm going to log on to my Windows 8 machine as a test user. All right, and so here I can see those previous logon um, information. And as it logs in, it should take me directly to the desktop. I shouldn't see the usual Windows 8 start screen. All right, so my policy is applying correctly. and that will also apply to my servers currently and that's fine um, because we're going to be focusing on this WMI filter which allows us to filter that policy to match specific criteria um, the example I'll be using in this video is that I'm going to apply that only to my servers um, so to begin we need to create a new WMI filter I'm gonna go ahead and title it Windows Server and the description will be limit GPO scope to Windows Server OS's. Now I need to add the query in here that will limit everything to the specific operating system that matches Windows Server operating systems. Um, so the query for that is select the wildcard from win32 underscore operating system where caption like and then in quotes Microsoft Windows server with the percent sign on the end and then end quotes when we hit OK we're gonna get a little warning message we're gonna go ahead and tell it to use the namespace anyways and hit OK then we'll hit save to save that filter so now that the filter has been created we want to apply it to this policy and we come back to the scope, and down in the bottom of the scope pane, we have WMI filtering. We hit the drop down arrow and select the filter. Say yes to apply it. And then on my Windows 8 machine, I'm going to go ahead and run a command prompt, give the command GP update, let that process for a moment. and then we're going to log out and log back in with the same user and we'll see that those policy that policy is now no longer applying so I'm not going to see any indicators of previous logins and I will be taken back to the start screen rather than the desktop and there it is back to the start screen so I know it's not working on the desktop now, but I want to verify that it is working on my server. So I'm going to do the same thing. Give a GP update command. Go ahead and log back out. Sign in with the same user. And here I'm still getting the previous login information. And taking it straight to the desktop, although Windows Server 2012, you'd probably end up at the desktop regardless. All right. So let's go ahead and remove the filter. 
we'll give the GP update again on our Windows 8 machine. Go ahead and log out. Log back in, same user. And there is my login information showing my most recent login um, that was successful and my any unsuccessful attempts. Back to the desktop again. So I'm going to do this one more time just to make sure that it actually login attempts. I'm going to use an incorrect password here and then give the correct password to verify that it does notify me that somebody, me, attempted to log in unsuccessfully using the wrong password. And it'll even give me the exact number of times that it was attempted. So I click OK to indicate that I have seen the notification and finish logging in. So there's no additional steps there except clicking OK um, at any notifications. And that is all of the policies that I had, well, the two, really, two settings I had configured. Um, this was show me there's login information. Not necessarily the best thing to have applied to all of your users, but certainly wouldn't hurt anything to have that on your servers, just so you can track and see if somebody's trying unsuccessfully to log into your servers, um, especially if they're trying to use your admin account or whatever your credentials are. Um, it's not bad for users. It will notify a user if somebody else is trying to log into their account. Um, but that extra step might end up irritating some of your users. So it's kind of dependent on what your environment is like and how you want to have it set up. Um, let's see. Alright, so it looks like that covers the objectives for the activity. Um, as always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them for me below. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in my next video.